Good morning. Please join in our opening hymn, number 402, O Come Divine Messiah, number 402. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. Amen. Certainly welcome as we gather for Mass today. This weekend on the third Sunday of Advent, the church calls us to rejoice. We rejoice not because we hope for some great big pile of presents, we rejoice because we draw closer to the celebration of the birth of our Savior. That, that, that in, indeed is incredible news of great joy. We hear in the, the readings about how the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame leap, and, and these incredible things that God does. So we seek to be attentive to the amazing things God does in our midst. We prepare for the sacred mysteries, by acknowledging that darkness and sin in our life, we ask God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, 
Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice the bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Lord, protect. 
A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you see? Did you go out to the desert to see a reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal places. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. 
He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Rejoice, rejoice, the coming of the Lord is at hand. Certainly welcome to you all on this wonderful celebration of the third Sunday of Advent, known as Gaudete Sunday. And Gaudete means rejoice, rejoice. And we have something to rejoice about, although we may not know. For the joy of Christ is coming and his healing is about to be with us. So we hear in both the readings today, we hear about a desert and we hear about this wonderful God and Jesus that has this miraculous healing power that can heal, heal, heal the deaf heal the lame, make the mute speak, the deaf hear. He has all these wonderful powers. So my question to you is, are you in a desert? And what is in that desert? Do you see the flower? Do you see the glorious Jesus in the desert? We hear in the first reading, we hear the Israelites for years and years tromping through the desert and suffering and, and everything is just not very good. They don't think. And then Isaiah the prophet is telling them, you must look in the eyes of God. You must look through the eyes of God to see the goodness that is there in front of you, to see the good works of our God, because God was present in their life all the way through these hard times in the desert. I can't help but picture this picture that I've seen, and I've seen it in life too. Um, in the middle of a sidewalk, there's a flower growing through the cement, through the crack of the cement, and shows us that through this drab, weary earth, this desert, that there's beauty. There's something good, no matter where we're at. The beauty of Jesus is there for us to see, to feel. His healing power is there. And I can't help but think of wondering where you're at in your life. Are you in a desert where there's no water, no food, Nothing good. Is something going on in your life that feels like you're just tirelessly walking and suffering the illnesses and pains of life? Today's message says rejoice and rejoice for there's hope in the Lord. He will heal you. He will fix everything. Maybe not in this life, but maybe the next, but maybe this one. But certainly his comfort and his company will give us joy in this life as we walk through these, these hard times. 
Many times do we walk in this desert and suffer. And we camouflage it with alcohol or drugs or something else. Our healing Lord is telling us to rejoice and rejoice for he is here for us. Lean on him. Use him. He wants us to prepare for the coming of our Lord and for the coming of his second coming. Be ready. Be prepared. And then we hear the words in the second reading where I personally struggle. My wife's here, so she's going to testify to this. But be patient. Be patient, for the Lord is coming. Be patient. We don't know when or how, but we must be patient. Be patient with Christ. Be patient and know that he is going to come and heal us. It doesn't matter if we're a glorified prophet or whatever. We don't have to wear fancy clothes or anything like that, like they're saying about John the Baptist. We're to present ourselves to God, who we are, be patient for his healing and his graces and his mercies, and they will come no matter where you're at, no matter how bad things are. He will be there for you, he will be there with you, and he will get you through it. No matter how bad it may seem, there's great joy to know that our Lord Jesus Christ is there with us and for us. Jesus will heal you joyfully. Jesus came and suffered for us. Not so that we should suffer, but so that we should feel his healing joy. He did the suffering for us. We need to give it to him. Let him take it. I can't help but think here at Christmas time about how are we going to present ourselves to our Lord Jesus Christ? Are we going to be a joyful flower in the desert that shows the beauty of Jesus Christ? For I do believe that that would be a true gift or present to Jesus. The most wonderful present. Because he gives us the greatest present that we could ever have. His presence. His presence in our life. He's with us. He gives us joy and love and hope. How are we presenting ourselves this Christmas to Jesus? Are we presenting ourselves as a wonderful flower? Or are we presenting ourselves as a lump of coal? We must cleanse ourselves. Go to reconciliation. Show recompense as God shows us. Show Jesus that we can be joyful and give others joyful. And I, I can't help but think that in your life right now, if you're not in this bad place, this desert where there's no good, if you're not in that desert and everything is paradise to you and everything is going good and everything is joyful and you're like, he ain't talking to me. Well, 
That's awesome. That's great. That's a good place to be. Stay there. But look around. Look around because there's somebody out there that's walking through that desert that doesn't know the way, that doesn't have any joy, that needs the joy of Jesus Christ. They need that flower in the desert. They need the beauty of Jesus Christ to come to them, help them, get them help. Show them there is joy and healing in the deserts of life. Be patient. Be patient, for the Lord will come. He will come to all of us, each and every one of us. Be patient and rejoice, for the coming of the Lord will save you. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. God, you are gracious and all-powerful, yet you invite us to be patient and remain open to you. With expectant and hopeful hearts, we turn to you as we offer our needs and our prayers. For Pope Francis, Bishop Thomas, and all church leaders, may they never hesitate to proclaim the good news in the face of conflict, poverty, and despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders in government, may they respond generously to the needs of the poor, the homeless, the marginalized, the imprisoned, and the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the church, may we be granted clear vision to see the good things that Christ does in the church and in the lives of the people around us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as many people celebrate Our Lady of Guadalupe, the patroness of the Americas, we may all work to bring together people of different cultures and languages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who carry heavy burdens and seem to have little reason for hope, May the many good things of this season bring them joy and the assurance that Jesus comes to save us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children and families, 
May this be a special time for them to be patient with each other, to heal divisions, and to grow in holiness and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or afflicted with disease or illness, and those who care for them, may God grant them healing and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Jason Bonnell and Dorothy Stark, May all who have died experience the glory of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in the Parish Book of Intentions and our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, give us eyes of faith to see your beauty and wonder in the world you have created and in the children you call your own. Grateful for the gift of our faith, we offer our prayers and ask that you hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in our offertory hymn number 410, The King Shall Come, number 410.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out 
for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, that takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people, just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and in a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Please join in our communion hymn number 442, Lo How a Rose Ever Blooming, number 442.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple announcements. So um, today, this afternoon at 2 o'clock here, we'll have our um, Advent penance service. We have two other priests coming to help, so come. We'll um, pray together a little bit and then have the opportunity for individual confession. Or you'll notice in the bulletin um, coming up this week on both Monday and Thursday, I have Days of Grace. Um, Monday out at Blakesley and then Thursday here, I'll be available at a certain number of hours of the day um, for individual confession. Um, so I invite you just to you know, encourage you to take advantage of it's, uh, it's responding to John the Baptist's call to repent. It's, a, it's an opportunity to experience the great mercy and forgiveness of the Lord. There's no better way to prepare for his coming. So take advantage of that opportunity. Also, um, a, a reminder that this um, Tuesday is the concert in, at St. Michael's in, in Hicksville, the Steve um, Andresano and Sarah Hart. Really incredible. I saw the programs that they have printed up and just the, some of the songs and the music. You know how music often touches us very deeply, our hearts and our souls. So um, come. Yeah, I, I, it, it will just be a delightful evening. You can, once again, get online. Just do a search for Comfort and Joy Concert, St. Michael in Hicksville, and it will come up. And then you can get on there and order and pay for your tickets um, through credit card or PayPal or however. Or if you don't want to do that, just call the office. And Deb has done that already, where she's ordered them, um, you know, and got them, and then just pay her. So, so really, it's a, a great opportunity that we have that just will be a, a delightful, relaxing, and, and inspiring, and, and beautiful evening. So this Tuesday. And then this Thursday is Faith on Fire in the evening here. So um, throughout the day, we'll have um, a time for, individ or for, uh, for, for adoration. And so there's a sign-up sheet in the back if you care to do that. Or just come and spend some beautiful time with the Lord. And then finally, there is a sign-up sheet in the back for the Christmas Masses. So if you know that you're going to be here for any of those, would like to help out as an usher or a um, community distributor or in some way, please um, help us out by signing up. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Please join by responding, amen. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in our closing hymn, number 421, Proclaim the Joyful Message, number 421. in 
John.